What's up YouTube? Dylan here. I'm going to talk about how you're being robbed and what you can do about it. So before I get into that, like, hit the subscribe button, and let's get started. So how are you being robbed? And uh, what can you do about it, right? You, you probably don't even realize you're being robbed. And this is something that I didn't even realize. I didn't even think about, right? Because, you know, you get so fixated on life and whatever pursuit you're, you're doing, right? And that you don't oftentimes look outside of that or you, you devote little energy to looking outside of that. And it takes time to get enough energy, enough return, like information and knowledge coming to you to then you, you can start putting pieces together. So what my realization was, and it was when I got pulled into the, the crypto world, it was the concept that was, it was mainly the concept of, of, of inflation and the fact that when I, st I started hearing Michael Saylor talk about um, the impact of, of inflation on where is he going to put his money. And, you know, the guy's a billionaire, so he's got a ton of money. But he's like, look, I got all this money. I got his money and I don't want to lose my money. And my business has this money. What do we do with it? Right. Just like open any questions like, what do you do with it? Like, where do you put it? Right. And he's like, normally, you know, you put it in, you know, you, you could hold it in cash. Right, you could hold it. You you could put it in equities. You could put it in. You can reinvest in your company. So he's all, you got all these different ways. He said, but the problem that we've now run into is the fact that the uh, the cash that we're holding, or the the co like the the due to the mass printing of money, right? The value the, the the value retained by cash after a year is significantly less than it used to be. It's like, look, it used to be like, you typically lose about, you know, three to 6% of cash a year. So basically if you have $100 next year, you, you basically have 94 if you don't do anything with it, right? So same thing, 100,000, you know, you have 94,000, 100 million, you have 94 million. So you're losing money. So for a lot of people, it's like, that's the price they pay to have cash on hand. It's like, okay, I'll pay 6% because if I have cash on hand, then I can readily deploy it in things that can give me a better return or if I need that cash, right? So a lot of companies will, will do that and it's a, it's a price, price worth paying. The problem t turns into when you then start losing like 10 to 15 to 20% of that value of cash over a year, uh, of the value of your cash over a year. And that really creates a problem, right? Or that creates a, a problem that maybe not for, for everyone, but for a lot of people, it's like, wait, so if I had $100 million, $100,000, Ten thousand. It works for whatever level, and I just held it in my bank account. I put it under, in a, under my mattress. Don't do that if you have hundred million dollars. Don't put it under your mattress. Bad idea. And here's why: because the next year it's only going to be worth eighty, right? You still have a hundred million dollars, but what you can purchase with it will be only eighty million dollars versus you know relative to what it was last year. Because the inflation creates more money, which then devalues what your currency can actually, what your dollar can can do can can buy and asset so like and if you value it by like you know, maybe the asset prices go up that you invest in um, another way that they measure it is can, the cpi so like the price of consumer goods might might go up so the things that you could buy with it get more expensive relative to the value of your dollar right not because that they should be more expensive like i, I had i thought about this before it's like why are like toaster ovens like why are they expensive? They've been around for a while. Like we have all the technologies for them. Like why are toaster ovens the price they are today? And part of it is due to inflation, right? And the cost of goods, right? The cost of goods to acquire them, you get the cost and the company's gotta make a margin and all that kind of stuff. And then if inflation hits and it happens, and inflation is not necessarily all bad, but certain levels of it can be bad. But if it happens, like then the cost of those components go up and it raises the cost of the toaster, despite the fact that like we've had toasters forever. So it's not like, there's any sort of, maybe there's some cutting edge innovation in the design of a toaster, but I doubt there's a ton, right? I, I, there's, it really isn't that complicated. You have heat, hot things on the side, you know, on both sides of your toast, and you have a timer, right? And, and like, maybe it's like they, they understood like the heat to, you know, heat to time ratio so your your bread your, your bread doesn't get too toasted. Who knows what it is? But it, I was just like, man, those things should be super cheap. But because of inflation, the cost of things and the relative value of the dollar, and we're purchasing it with today's dollars versus yesterday's dollars, uh, you know, they're, they're the price that they are. But when the, those the cost of the those components go up a lot, then the value that the cost of that toaster goes up a lot. You're like, wait, I'm paying fifty dollars for a toaster. 
Like, why am I paying $50 for a toaster? And that's where you really start to feel inflation. And it hits you, and like, it's like a death by a thousand cuts, right? You go to the grocery store, and you start noticing it when the same groceries that you would buy would normally cost you $100, now it's $120, $150. $200. Like it's the same thing. It's like, well, I'm not like buying all, I'm not going to Whole Foods and buying all the, you know, the, the trendy organic stuff that mostly is just a marketing ploy. No, there's some, there is actually some really good, good organic stuff. Um, but different, you know, whatever. I'm not trying to rag on Whole Foods, but so I started thinking about this and the concept of, you know, it's like, okay, well that that's impacting me. And it's just, it's mind blowing to think that, you know, it's impacting, uh, especially it's impacting a lot of people that, so it's impacting me. Uh, I used to work at a restaurant and is impacting a lot of people in the service industry and is impacting a lot of people that are on the front lines, right? Uh, a lot of people that are like the working class, like people that, that go to these jobs, make an hourly wage, and that's what they do. And so how is it impacting like, the, the service industry? How is it impacting like your waiter or if you're in the service industry? Um, think about it like this. It's like, despite the pandemic, right, which was everyone knows that was, you know, a whole wild time for uh not great business for for you if you're in the service industry um in general right so some people did really well other people did, didn't but some businesses closed other others thrived um but you're unless the the price so let's let's use a, a target of like 10 percent, right 10 percent inflation so your 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 hundred dollars is worth 90 dollars the next year right so basically you would need to make 10 percent more on each day or each time, like every, for every hour you work in order to ha make the same amount as you did last year, right? The problem is, is like the margins in the food industry are razor thin and then they gotta be careful with the prices. No one wants to really pay 25 bucks for a burger. Now you wouldn't pay 25 bucks for a burger, but if your burger's $10, then they have to increase it to $11, right? And so they do that for each food item, right? And these, these, you see these prices slowly increasing and a lot of restaurants won't do that or they won't, they won't be able to do that in a year or so because, you know, as a, as a tipped out employee, right? You're typically tipped a percentage based upon the total bill. So, you know, barring any sort of improvement in your service levels, right? If the prices of the food remain the same, right? And the average, you know, customer spend at the restaurant, you're actually making less money a year later with inflation than you were the year before doing everything else equal. Like if the restaurant doesn't adjust the prices for their food, right? If the prices remain the same, if the average order value of the customer remains, let's just say it's a hundred dollars, right? You're still going to get tipped at 15 to 20%. If you're, if you're tip out, percentage is still the exact same you're gonna be getting paid the the exact same monetary value which for some people in the service industry is great right because i know people that um and when i was in it you know low end you know on a bad night you, you make 20 bucks an hour right and then on a good night you can make 40 50 60 dollars an hour um and those you know those happen those are going to be sprinkled in there but you know averaging around 40 dollars an hour which is pretty good right um it's, it's pretty good for you know, for any, any hourly pay for, for a job. But if I still, but if I made $40 per hour last year and then I went back and I made $40 an hour again, right? I would, I would be making 10% less and that's 10%, 10 inflation. But what if it's 20%, right? So then 20% less. So you have to, so you see, it's like these people in these jobs and these roles, or if you're in those, those jobs or these roles, you may think that you make it get a, a boost. Maybe your, your percent earned goes from 40 to 42%. Right, you're still not making or forty dollars to forty two dollars. Right, you're still not making ten percent more. So you're still making less than you did the year before, despite that year of experience, right, that the year of expertise and all of that. And a lot of times, like with in the service industry, like really, really, really good servers, you know, they can thrive anywhere, and their tip percentages are super high. But in general, right, you're gonna make it in America fifteen to twenty percent. Um, just in because that's just how most people tip so that's going to be the bulk of your tips are going to be that 15 to 20 percent range and then so that's based on you know like how much you're selling so you do have a role to play and you should give good service and you should master your craft no matter what it is or for how long you're doing it you should try to do, do a good job but it really it really uh creates an issue when you're like wow i'm doing better this year i know more i'm selling more but i'm not making more my money goes doesn't go as far and you really start running into these hard caps of like, well, the restaurant's not just gonna give you a 10% raise because you've been there a year. Maybe some do, but most of them won't. So it's like, how are you gonna make that 10% more or 20% more? Well, the reality is you're not. 
And that's where you see a lot of people, especially with unemployment and all that kind of stuff, that they don't want to go back to work. They don't want to do their jobs. They don't want, it's not because they don't like it, but it's just like they're not getting paid. Like It's like if I can make $15 an hour, $20 an hour, just not working versus like if you ever worked in a restaurant or anything like that, like it's tough. Like it's it, like, it's a lot of energy, a lot of movements. There's a lot of stress. Um, it, you, you'd make the same or less, or you could in a lot of situations, you would make the same or less. But in the situation where you get to stay home and you just get paid, it's like, well, you get paid and you have all your time to do other things. Right? Versus in a restaurant, you're, if you're working there 40, 50 hours a week, which I know a lot of people um, in the service industry do, you don't have time for anything else. Right? And you're exhausted all the time because you're walking for 8, 10, 12 hours. You're moving around, talking to people, engaging. Like It, it can be a lot. So that's creating issues. But just thinking about this, like how you're being robbed, it's like you think that you're doing good. You think that in those positions, you think, okay, finally I got my job back again. And that's great. But you're, you're subtly getting paid less. Are you able to do less with your money? You're, you're not going to be able to save as much because of the cost of the, the, even just food, right? Small, small goods goes up. Well, that's less for your savings. And then say you want to buy a house, right? Or any sort of assets. So you can actually like grow your wealth. And some people like to argue, well, you know, you shouldn't choose to be a server or whatnot or, or whatever it is. Well, this applies to your job as well. Like if you're in the corporate jo- corporate world getting a salary, if you're not getting a 20% raise year over year when the monetary supply is expanding by 15 to 20%, then, you know, you're in the same boat, right? So unless you're getting 20, 30% raises, you're actually not making more money either. And so how are you going to afford to buy a house, right? How are you going to afford to buy these things that they keep going up? And so you think you did well like the past year and you put your experience and skills, you know, skills to work and you did a good job. And then your boss is like, all right, we're going to give you a $2,000 raise. It's like, great, right? Say, but, but that's not 10% unless you're making only $20,000. Um, so it was just seeing that this is playing out, right? It just really plays out for hourly roles, if, but it plays out for your salary job too. And so it's like, that's not how it's supposed to work. That's not good, right? That's not how you want, that's not, you don't put all that effort in. You don't try to like, you know, improve your skill set just to make less the next year, doing a better job and producing more. And that's how you're getting, that's how you're getting robbed, right? That's how, like, b- like not even before your eyes, like you don't even realize it. It's just like, you think you you have this money, but you really don't. And it's just slow. And then like, you'll, then you'll eventually start feeling it. Right. And just like, like I said, when you go to the grocery store, hundred dollars turns into 120 and it's not because you're changing what you're buying. And for me, it was like, wow, that's, that's like, that's very eye opening. And so what can you do about that? Right. Well, and that's some of the things that crypto hopes to solve, right? Bitcoin hopes to solve as a store of value. So, you know, obviously it sucks. Like it, and a lot of people in the, in the crypto industry give the examples of like Venezuela, Argentina, where the, the rate, like where essentially like the value of your work, of your hourly time, of the service that you provide to people, just with inflation, just keeps going down, 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 down to where it's just like you're working, right? But you're getting nothing in return. You can't even afford to buy food. That's why they give the examples of like the Weimar Republic in Germany where people were like sh- using wheelbarrows of, um, of whatever their, their currency was to buy like a loaf of bread, Right, so like Zimbabwe, I think someone had a picture. They they, they bought a, it had a Zimbabwe billion dollar bill because of the massive inflation. You have to use a billion dollars of Zimbabwe dollars, and it got you like a coffee, right? Something so small. They had to increase the denomination of the dollar because it's been so devalued, so much inflation that happens so fast, and so that's some of the things where that, that that's what got me excited about crypto and stuff. So it's like it's something that I can like take my money. Right, because you can't always change your job right away. Right, sometimes it takes time to change your job or, do, or what you're doing, or to build that business to get the revenue flowing in. But you can take that money and you can put it in something, an asset that will maintain its value over time, so that money value won't be uh, won't decrease based upon inflation. And you know, obviously, you can't do this with the money that you need to spend to pay your bills fully, because with crypto, still there's taxes and all that kind of stuff. Um, but you can still do this, right? You can still uh, start, start thinking about how can I, and it's just like a mindset shift. It's like, okay, well, this job obviously is paying me less this year. And if the monetary supply keeps increasing and 
inflation keeps going, I'm going to make less the next year. Like, how am I going to keep up with these percentages? How am I going to keep up? How am I going to get 10%, 20%, 30% more pay each year for the next five years? Like, what would that look like in your job? And like, you can take an Excel spreadsheet and just like, you know, just, just play that out, right? Take whatever your salary is today and be like, okay, what is it uh, next year when I do, you know, salary today times one point, uh, let's say it's 10, let's, let's say it's 15%. You know, so 1.15, right? Okay, and then take that, whatever that equals, and it's like, okay, the next year times that by 1.15. And that's how much more you need to keep making each year. And like, if you, if you do that for a lot of jobs, you soon run into an upper limit. Like in this, like a service industry, it's like very quickly, if you stayed in there two, three years, you're not getting paid that much. Like you're not gonna be able to get paid that much money. So you gotta start thinking, it's like, okay, I have to then switch a career, switch careers that um, allow me to make that much more money so that the value of my hour is going up with time so that I can afford to keep up. So that's a good thought process to have. So it's like, okay, do I build a business? Do I switch careers to this industry that can pay me that? But then you don't want to fall into that same trap with the new industry, right? Because you still have to grow there. So it creates a whole problem. It creates a whole cycle. And um, you know, that's where something like Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrencies come, come into play. Because it, while you're going through that process of like, well, how can I continue to, to make more so I'm not falling behind? And it's not just like about trying to make more money. It's just you, you don't want your purchasing power to decrease relative to the price of the things that you need to buy to live, right? And live your lifestyle. Like no one wants that, right? If you have a certain lifestyle that you want to live and you enjoy living, right? All the power to you. Like you should get to live that if you put in the work to do it. But if it's constantly being moved further and further away from you while you're working harder and harder and harder, that's not fair. Right? That's theft, right? And people are, are are doing that, knowing that that's what's happening, right? And it's like, and you know, they say, well, you know, you should know better, or go somewhere else. Well, it's like not everyone can. So what are you supposed to do? Like this applies to every person in every industry in you know, all over the world. The same kind of thing is playing out. And so the rich people who have the money and they have the assets, well, they buy more assets because the assets won't devalue. They'll continue to to increase in value with inflation, right? Money will flow into the assets a lot of times and even more so, so especially scarce assets. So, uh, but for a lot of people, you don't have, like scarce assets are expensive. And so how do you get them? And that's the problem that crypto, Bitcoin, a lot of that solves. You can start putting $5, a dollar a day, right? 10 cents, probably not, you can, yeah, you can actually probably put 10 cents into it a day. You know, there's still fees and stuff. Um, so some exchanges may not allow you just to put, you know, they might have minimum amounts, but in that case, you can just save up and then put, you know, put it in at the end of the week, right? In the two weeks, right? So you can just consistently do that. And people can do that all over the world, right? People from countries, like, people from countries all over the world, like from totally different, with totally different economic backgrounds, religious backgrounds, because this is happening. Like this is hap literally happened in Argentina, in Venezuela, right? Like this, this is a thing that has happened like on this planet. And if those people would have known and recognized this, they could have saved their, their money, their wealth, their property, right? They could they could have put it in something that so that when the Argentinian peso peso went from you know ten you know eight to one to hundred and hundred and fifty to one, so hundred and fifty pesos to the dollar, the people could have been putting their money, and they did, right? They put their money in dollar bills, right? There was the blue chip rate, um, the blue chip, the black market rate for the Argentinian uh, peso to dollar exchange rate that people would do. They, they'd give you more pesos, and so when they, the federal exchange rate was like eight to one, they'd give you 12 or 14 to one for that dollar because then they, they'd save that dollar because it was worth paying that premium because they knew the next year the federal exchange rate would be like 10 or 12 to one. So like it, it you know, so it doesn't, their peso doesn't go as far. So crypto is that way, is, is that out. Bitcoin is, is one of those, those, those outs, right? That you can put your money in as a store of value. Now, when you're really desperate, it doesn't matter. You just want it because you got to put it in something else that doesn't, isn't decreasing in value as fast as, as uh, the value of the currency that you're, you're operating in. Um, so you would put your spending money in something like Bitcoin because if the next month the value of your currency is down 10%, 15% versus ours, it's like, you know, right now in the United States, it's about, you know, one to 2% a month decrease in value um of our of our dollar versus like if it's 10 to 20 percent a month like it's like all right well i'll put it in whatever i can that has any sort of liquidity so i can get it out when i need it but then it also doesn't decrease in value as much as what mine mine is decreasing in value by and um that's that's the cool thing about cryptos and bitcoin i know i've been rambling but um it's exciting to realize this it's also mind-blowing and also like is why i i want to share this more and talk to more people about it because you know, this is happening before our eyes and, and sure it may never get to a place where 
it's a super hyper hyper inflationary crash at least in america maybe it will maybe you know it's very possible like thinking that something's not possible here that is a thing that happens uh is is a you know path to disaster right but youtube is great it's worldwide so like you may be tuning in from somewhere else in the world and you may not have thought about this or maybe you have and you're further along but maybe watching this video and hearing about this you start to question like well, what is the value of my my money how how is the value stored over time how am i storing that value over time and maybe it, it helps you you know start making better decisions on where you put that money do i invest in consumables right am i gonna buy that flashy car or jacket or things like that or am i gonna save it am i put it in something what are the options right is crypto a good option right is bitcoin a good option and only you can make those decisions for yourself by doing your research and understanding your situation and everything going on but all it takes is a little bit of awareness and um you can completely change your life like that's i um i'll end with this the, the look at the guy medicoven so maybe someday he'll watch one of my videos or I'll get to meet the dude, but pretty inspirational story. Like he went from pretty much nothing and, and now has, you know, has been very successful in crypto and he's similar age as me. And, you know, he's now putting, he's like got all his wealth in crypto and he invests in the crypto space because he believes in it. And, uh, you know, he's, he was from, I think from India and where it's completely different, different than, than what it is here in America, but it's giving him the chance for his, like American dream. And I think that's a pretty cool story. And if more people in the world could get access to that, and if more people from more cultures all around the world had a vehicle to give them this kind of like, this opportunity, this this American dream, like where they can own something, where they can be a part of something, where they can grow, where their wealth isn't taken from them, where they can, they can have it secure and transfer it to like their future selves like save it for their future selves but also for their their future children their families their grandchildren right their grandchildren's children like that's a pretty powerful message and i think you know that's what's really hooked me into this and um yeah so anyways that's all my rambling for tonight hopefully you enjoyed this my computer even turned off because i was talking too much so uh hopefully you enjoyed this and just go look into it right go look go go look at some michael saylor videos like look l listen to people talk about crypto and the devaluing of the fiat currency and and why crypto is why they decided crypto is their path but just think about for yourself like you don't want your future self to make less money doing more work no one wants that for their future self. Like, i don't want that for my present self i don't want that for your present self i don't want that for your future self especially because you're doing the work to deserve more pay like you you deserve it Right? And so how can you push back and fight against that uh, system that's working against you, even not, like, not even like in front of your eyes, but behind your back? Like, so uh, think about that. So that's it for tonight. So hopefully uh, you like this video. Like, subscribe, share. If you want to learn more about this, want to learn more about the entrepreneurship and business opportunities that are being created in this space every day, uh, join my Patreon. It should be in the link below. So with that, peace.